What's up guys? Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona. And we're heading out of Barcelona again to Aragon to a town called Roda de Isavena. Despite having only 25 people, there is so much to do and so much to see. And I really want to share that with you in this video. On our tour of Roda, we're going to see the town's museum, check out the cathedral, have dinner in the cloister, and get attacked by a vulture. And if you're only here for the vulture attack, fast forward to the end. Let me know what you think by hitting that thumbs up or leaving a comment below and subscribe if you want to see other videos like this one. So let's go. Here with my guy Jorge, who is my girlfriend's sister's boyfriend. That makes sense. We're gonna go check out his hometown, which is Roda. Really cool place that is Spain's smallest town with a cathedral. Perched high atop a hill, it's impossible to ignore the historic significance of Roda de Isabena. A former military lookout point between the Muslim Taifas and Christian counties, Roda later became the Episcopal headquarters and the site of an 11th century cathedral. While the height of the town's importance ended in the 12th century when the bishopry was moved, the town is no less impressive today. With its charming walks down stone-built streets and incredible views of the valley below, Roda de Isavena has been voted one of Spain's most beautiful villages. From history to architecture to unbelievable stories, Rota offers it all. And with Jorge's help, I was able to get the local experience. So let's start the tour. It's beautiful streets like these that make you understand why this could be one of Spain's most beautiful villages. Rota is Spain's smallest town with a cathedral. It's not technically a cathedral anymore and hasn't been since the 12th century, but it still carries that weight and that name. What you have is a cathedral that was originally founded in 956, destroyed in the year 1006, and then rebuilt in 1030. What you see behind me is that second cathedral from 1030, a Romanesque cathedral that's incredible to see from the inside. So let's go check it out. The church is named after St. Vincent, who was alive during the 3rd and 4th centuries and is another one of the many martyrs killed during the times of Diocletian. Vincent's crimes were preaching for the Bishop Valerius, who had a speech impediment. Upon being jailed in Valencia, it is said that he underwent his tortures in such a peaceful manner that his own jailer was led to convert to Christianity. The interior of the church has a crypt that is above ground, not a common characteristic for churches at the time. It is here that one of the bishops, St. Raymond, is buried. Raymond was the bishop of Barbastro and Rota at the beginning of the 12th century and is responsible for not only leading the reconstruction of the cathedral, but founding many churches under his lead. Many artifacts decorate the church, but the most prized and valuable possession is Raymond's 12th century wooden chair that is decorated with Nordic animals in which no two are the same. Now when I first heard the story, I couldn't believe that one of the biggest art thieves in Europe and the world had taken 30 pieces along with the chair from this cathedral in 1979. René Alphonse van der Berg, better known by Spaniards as Eric el Belga, took the chair and actually broke it to get it out of the cathedral. Now there's still a lot of mystery about what actually occurred and there's still a lot of anger from the townspeople about the theft. So it's not a name you want to run around Rota screaming. Now this is a guy responsible for over 6,000 pieces of artwork going missing in Spain alone. 
the chair being one of the biggest stories at the time. This happened in 1979, and only three years later, Erika Belgo was arrested. He was actually in jail in Barcelona for just over three years before agreeing to work with the police to help get a lot of those pieces of artwork back. Now, over the next couple of years, he would return over 1,500 pieces of artwork, and he was let free, where he actually lived in Malaga until just this last summer. The chair itself was returned in the 90s here to Rota. Obviously, the people here were happy to have it back, but not happy to see Eric, of all people, donating it back to the church. Maybe I should do a full video on Eric El Belga. Leave a comment below and let me know if that's a video you would watch. The cloister is a must when you come to visit, and that is only part of the tour of the church. At night, it turns into a restaurant, and if you've never had dinner inside an 11th century church's cloister, I couldn't recommend it more. The cloister itself is a bit uncommon, and if you take a close look at the tops of each of the columns, you'll see inscriptions in place of the usual sculptures. They don't know where the clergymen were buried, and in absence of the tombstones, the writing is dedicated to those buried here. So this is really cool. We got a private tour of the library of the church with books from the 16th, 17th century. Just opening those up and looking at all of the musical notes with the organs and all of just the old style to that book is, it's like a dream come true to be able to open up something that old and actually hold it. You always see it in museums, but it, it, it's never the same. Maybe you guys will recognize that picture right behind me. Just outside of the cathedral, what you'll find is the old mill. And this is where they put together uh, the olive oil. You can still see some of the pieces that are left over within the wooden posts and even the circles that were left where they used to grind up everything to create that olive oil. Jorge actually knows the owner to the museum, so he's letting us in for a private tour. This has been closed for the last couple months, but we're gonna be able to go inside and see the three separate areas, which used to be the old mill for the animals and the donkeys, a boat collection that he has, that he actually made all the boats on the inside, these model boats, and then one of the best model airplane collections in all of Spain. I was so impressed with everything here that I couldn't just leave it down to one small clip. So I took all the footage and created a separate video so you can check out the entire museum. So click that link above and check it out. You can see the views into the valley just off the balcony right here. Now, these apartments were made by Jorge himself, so it's a real treat for us to be able to be staying here. And if you're ever looking for a place to stay around, if you're traveling through Aragon, coming over to Rota, I'll put a link in the description below, and you can find these places to stay. Definitely recommend them.
Now, before I tell you how we got attacked by a vulture, you need to understand that I am not a bird person. So I was more than content to leave the vulture alone that we saw sitting on the top of the bell tower. But Jorge decided to just start clapping like crazy. And of course, when the bird heard us, it flies over, soars over the top, and right where we are in the plaza, as it's about to strike, flapping its wings, it just falls right down and kind of starts chasing the people around. As you can imagine, we all just scatter all off to different places and everything. And this is right when the people in the restaurant come outside and Jorge is just standing there and says, we need another chair for dinner. One of my favorite things about Spain as a whole are all the small towns like Rota that you can find all over the country. So if you liked the video, subscribe to my channel so we can explore more places like Rota together. And leave a comment below with what you most liked about Rota and other things that you'd like to see in Spain and Barcelona. Thanks for watching and see you next time.